You have to, first of all, understand that you know nothing. You have to know how to do everything. And you also have to learn to embrace that you can't do everything. It really takes a huge attention to detail. You can't interpret it how you want. It needs to be how it actually is. I follow the Museum of Flight, and uh, we have a job listing. And I looked at that, and it was like the universe talked to me for a second. Every day I come to work, it still, it blows me away what legends I work among. You really can't necessarily put a time frame on some of the restoration. Something simple that may have taken a factory a week to do now may take a year or three years to do. You talk about perfection, we go a little bit step past that. 1966. So I'd watch planes fly over all the time, but they were off at a distance. One day, while I was out in the front yard, Grumman and Bearcat came over the top of our house, 300 feet, just scared the bejesus out of me. Ran in the house, but I didn't get through the door before I turned around to see where it went. That's where it started. It was just in my blood at that point, and I couldn't shake it. The other end of the building, we have a de Havilland Comet. It's been under restoration going on almost 20 years now. Inside is beautiful. You want to talk about the passion of our volunteers, the commitment. This was by volunteers. These guys were so dedicated to basically get this derelict machine back to condition. It just blows my mind to see the job that they've done is phenomenal. That right there is proof positive. All been redone. This aircraft looks like the day it did before it's almost its first flight. We're really proud. The volunteers have really put in a lot of work to uh, get it back into this condition. And I really miss those guys. A lot of them uh, are gone now. but. Uh, the legacy they left behind is what you're, what you're getting a chance to look at now. And I wish you could see the pride on their face once it got to this point and we're all able to kind of step back and take a look at the work that was accomplished. You have to be excited and you have to be willing to work extremely hard, work sometimes harder than you ever have. You have to be able to go home with a sore back and sore feet, or a headache, or hands, but know that what you're doing, you're sacrificing for it, but you're sacrificing for a future that you're not going to get to see. What I'm doing right now, it's gonna outlive all of us. It's that dedication that the future generations can see and learn and understand the importance of our history and what it actually was, not a fictitious illusion of it or just a picture, the actual history. The amount of passion to be dedicated to this career is about the same passion as someone who believes in superheroes. It's like going to Disneyland for your first time, but you do it five days a week, eight hours a day. If you ever get used to it, you should not be doing this career. Aviation gives people hope, and with hope, you can have a dream, and with a dream, you can do anything. I think every kid can understand the new bicycle in the window basically daydream about that thing. You may never get it, but that doesn't stop the passion. The pride that you get from seeing the outcome of a successful build and then to watch it go on out through the world is breathtaking. It's almost indescribable. And just to be able to say, here, to the next generation, the next two or three or four generations. This is what it was like. And I think we all share that same desire to leave something behind that other people cannot try to, to identify. That's what I want to do. I want to do something for future kids, what aviation has done for me.
Watch City Stream Tuesday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel or find us anytime online at seattlechannel.org.